Spinal's SAQ30 failed chromocytoma. The case. A 45-year-old patient is reviewed in the preoperative assessment clinic prior to surgery for excision of a pheochromocytoma. Introduction. Pheochromocytomas are catecholamine-secreting neuroendocrine tumors usually arising from the adrenal medulla. 30% extra-adrenal, 30% malignant, 30% familial, 10% bilateral, 10% normal tensive. When hereditary, they may be part of multiple endocrine neoplastic syndrome or in association with neuroectodermal dysplasia such as von Hippel-Lindau or von Reckinghausen's disease. They predominantly secrete noradrenaline followed by adrenaline and then to a much lesser extent dopamine. Familial ones predominantly secrete adrenaline. Phaos may secrete other substances such as VIP and ACTH. They affect both genders and present mainly in the third to fifth decade of life. Phaos can present perioperatively. Unless the diagnosis is considered and appropriate treatment is instituted, mortality rate is high, up to 50%. A. What are the characteristic symptoms and signs of a pheochromocytoma? Respiratory symptoms include shortness of breath, autopnea, and reduced exercise tolerance. Signs include crackles on auscultation, indicating pulmonary edema, tachypnea, and desaturation. Cardiovascular symptoms include palpitations and angina. Signs include hypertension, tachycardia, and tachyarrhythmias. Neurological symptoms include headache, anxiety, and visual disturbances. Signs include tremor, hypertensive encephalopathy, presenting as altered mental state, focal neurological signs and seizures, and weakness. Gastrointestinal symptoms include nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain due to splanchnic vasoconstriction. Signs include palpable tumor or metastasis. Metabolic symptoms include sweating and lethargy. Signs include weight loss. The patient may present with complications of FAO, such as hypertensive crisis, tachyarrhythmia, cardiomyopathy, diabetes, and electrolyte disturbances. B. What specific biochemical and radiological investigations might confirm the diagnosis of a pheochromocytoma? Biochemical tests include plasma and urinary metanephrine, normethanephrine, dopamine, and homovalinic acid. Radiological diagnosis is via MRI or CT, which confirms diagnosis in a patient with positive biochemical diagnosis. Radiocontrast may provoke pheochromocytoma crisis and its use must be avoided in the unblocked patient. MIBG scanning is important for assessing extra adrenal tumors or adrenal tumors with risk of spread. MIBG is a radiopharmaceutical agent similar in structure to noradrenaline, hence it is taken up by adrenergic neurons and concentrated in pheochromocytomas or paragangliomas. C. What therapeutic options are available to optimize the cardiovascular system prior to surgery? Overall aims include reduced blood pressure and systemic vascular resistance, adequate filling of circulation, control of tachycardia, improvement in cardiac function, and stable complications. Alpha blockers. Start 1 to 2 weeks preoperatively. Alpha blockers lower blood pressure. It increases intravascular capacity. Hence, adequate filling is a must. Monitor with serial hematocrits. Alpha blockers reduces afterload and myocardial strain and dysfunction. Alpha blockers reduces the risk of hypertensive surges with tumor manipulation and allows safe anesthesia for tumor removal. Alpha blockers prevents hypertensive response to induction of anesthesia. Phenoxybenzamine is non-selective, which blocks alpha receptors irreversibly and may cause postural hypotension, lethargy, and nasal congestion. Phenoxybenzamine protects against blood pressure surges with tumor manipulation. However, alpha-2 blockade prevents presynaptic noradrenaline reuptake, resulting in uninhibited noradrenaline release and consequent tachycardia by beta-1 receptors and can cause resistant hypotension post-op. Thus, non-selective alpha blockers 
must be stopped a couple of days before surgery. Examples of selective alpha-1 blockers include doxazosin and prazosin. They do not block alpha-2 receptors, so avoid tachycardia. However, they are competitive inhibitors and may be overwhelmed by catecholamine release with tumor manipulation. Beta blockers are used to control tachycardia caused by either non-selective alpha blockade or adrenaline or dopamine secreting tumor. Beta blockers should be started after alpha blockade, or else blockade of vasodilatory beta-2 receptors increases vasoconstriction, which increases SVR and hypertension in the presence of ongoing action of noradrenaline on alpha receptors, and the heart will lose beta-1 mediated inotropy while afterload is high, this may precipitate myocardial dysfunction and heart failure. Selective beta-1 receptor antagonists such as metoprolol or ethanolol are used, whereas alpha blockade is generally considered a necessity, beta blockade is more controversial and some anesthetists will avoid beta blockade. Calcium channel blockers such as nicardipine may be used in addition to alpha blockade if resistant hypertension. Calcium channel blockers block noradrenaline induced influx of calcium. They do not affect catecholamine secretion by the tumor. Metyrosine is an inhibitor of catecholamine synthesis. It is toxic and not widely used. Additional information Examiner report Some candidates confuse the signs and symptoms of pheochromocytoma with carcinoid syndrome and lost marks. Most candidates knew that alpha blockade had to be started before beta blockade but did not mention optimizing circulating volume or drugs such as calcium channel blockers and magnesium. What is the role of genetic testing in FAO? With increased genetic testing of families, more patients are being diagnosed before they become symptomatic, as up to 30% may be familiar. What are the criteria for fitness of surgery? There are no absolute criteria for fitness of surgery. What are the monitoring options? This includes vital signs such as heart rate and blood pressure, cardiac which includes ECG and transthoracic echocardiography. Patients with a history of ischemia or signs of heart failure require cardiac echocardiography. Patients may present with catecholamine cardiomyopathy. Monitoring of metabolic state is via blood sugar level and renal function tests. Excess catecholamines result in glycogenolysis and insulin resistance. Some patients may be frankly diabetic. Assessment of sympathetic blockade. Patients will often be admitted few days prior to surgery to observe BP control or have outpatient 24-hour ambulatory BP monitoring. Aim for BP of less than 140 over 90 mmHg with heart rate of less than 100 beats per minute. Erect and supine blood pressure and heart rate is useful and the patient should exhibit a marked postural drop of more than 20 mmHg with compensatory tachycardia. Duration of sympathetic blockade is determined by the practicalities of tumor localization and scheduling of surgery. Sympathetic blockade is started to treat symptoms as well as to prepare for surgery. Intraoperative considerations. The patient may be posted for laparoscopic or open adrenalectomy through a midline transverse or flank incision. Introduction of gas for laparoscopic resection can result in hypertension in normal subjects and this may be exaggerated in patients with pheochromocytomas. Monitoring is standard, including IABP and CVP. Cardiac output monitoring, especially if CVS disease and catecholamine cardiomyopathy. Temperature monitoring as risk of hypothermia during prolonged resection. Central venous line for drug infusions and large bore IV access is essential. Induction. Avoid agents that release histamine and dust catecholamines. Use propofol, alfentanil or remifentanil, vacuronium or rocuronium. Hypotension is unlikely at induction. Hypotension may be treated with either ephedrine, metaraminol or phenylephrine. Due to pre-op alpha blockade, higher doses will likely be needed. Dilute adrenaline may be required. Maintenance. If using volatile agent, use isoflurane or sevoflurane. Avoid desflurane as it may cause sympathetic activation. 
Options for analgesia include epidural with opioid, LA for open procedures, fentanyl, alfentanyl or remifentanyl until tumor removal, when morphine 10 to 20 mg can be substituted. Control heart rate at less than 100 beats per minute, for example with beta blockade. Intraoperative hypertension. This can occur at induction with formation of pneumoperitoneum and tumor handling. Fluctuations in blood pressure tends to be transient, and medications needs to respond accordingly. Preventive measures include pre-medication with temazepam, avoidance of tumor handling and close communication between the surgeon and anesthetist, avoid indirect sympathetic activation with ephedrine or metaraminol, avoid histamine-releasing drugs such as atracurium, saxamethonium and morphine, magnesium started prior to induction. Treatment of hypertension includes fentolamine, esmolol, labetalol, GTN or sodium nitroprusside, nicardipine, magnesium and remifentanil. Intraoperative hypotension may be caused by clamping of adrenal vein or removal of tumor. Once the tumor is resected, blood pressure takes several minutes to decline. Hypotension may be due to low cardiac output or low systemic vascular resistance. Prevention of intraoperative hypotension includes stopping alpha blocker one to two days preoperatively and ensuring adequate preload, maintain high CVP of 10 to 15 millimeters mercury, several liters of crystalloid may be required. Treatment of hypotension may be via fluids, low dose adrenaline, noradrenaline, metaraminol, phenylephrine, vasopressin, and helipressin. It is unusual to require inotropic support by the time the patient is ready to leave the theater unless there are coexisting medical problems. Post-op care. Nursing in ICU or HDU for 12 hours. Monitor blood glucose as withdrawal of catecholamine excess can lead to severe hypoglycemia. If both adrenals are resected, the patient will require steroid support immediately. Hydrocortisone 100 mg bolus in the theater, decreasing to maintenance dose after surgical stress. Fludrocortisone 0.1 mg daily may be commenced with oral intake. Even when one adrenal is removed, the patient may occasionally be hypoadrenal and require support. Special populations. Fail chromocytoma and pregnancy. There are many reports of combination of newly diagnosed fail chromocytoma in pregnancy. Mortality is up to 17%. Phenoxybenzamine and metoprolol are safe. If fail chromocytoma is diagnosed before mid-trimester, it should be resected at this stage. High mortality is associated with normal delivery. Consider lower segment caesarean section with or without resection of pheochromocytoma during the same procedure. Unexpected pheochromocytoma Diagnosis Any patient who has unexplained pulmonary edema, hypertension, or severe unexpected hypotension should prompt consideration of the diagnosis. However, diagnosis may be very difficult as there are no quick available tests to support the diagnosis in acute situations. Once the diagnosis has been considered, if possible, surgery should be discontinued to allow acute treatment, investigation and sympathetic block prior to definitive surgery. Attempts to remove the tumor during a crisis may result in significant morbidity and mortality. Treatment includes vasodilators and IV fluids. This may be counterintuitive in patients with pulmonary edema. Circulating volume may be markedly reduced and vasodilation will lead to profound drop in blood pressure. GTN may be successfully used in this situation. Patients who present with hypotension have an acutely failing heart due to profound vasoconstriction. Diagnosis and treatment are most difficult in these patients. Additional catecholamines in this situation merely fuel the fire but are difficult to resist. Mortality rate is very high. These are my references. Thank you.